Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to introduce to you about what are ionic equations. So first off, the best way to learn about ionic equations would be to do some questions actually. So here, reaction of sodium with dilute hydrochloric acid. So you're asked to write the chemical equation and ionic equation. So actually to help you find the ionic equation, you will first need to find its chemical equation. And later I'll introduce what exactly is an ionic equation. So write the chemical equation. In a chemical equation, you will see the whole story. What do I mean by the whole story? You'll see it right now. So first, reaction of sodium. That means I have sodium metal reacting with what? Here it says dilute hydrochloric acid, so HCl. And it will form, this will form obviously NaCl. And you should have learned this particular reaction in chapter 11, I believe. Yes, should be chapter 11 where you learn certain metals they can react with dilute acids. And this will also form hydrogen gas, H2. So just a few videos earlier, we learned about how we could balance a chemical equation. So I'm not going to go into details. You can refer to that video. But here on the right hand side, I have two hydrogen atoms. On the left, I just have one. So to balance the number of hydrogen atoms, I'll need to add the coefficient 2. Now remember the coefficient is added in front of the molecule or compound whatever that is. Okay but don't forget don't forget what does this 2 mean. Imagine there's an imaginary bracket here. This 2 would mean it's, it means that it's 2 times whatever the number of hydrogen atoms and 2 times the whatever the number of chlorine atoms here. In this case I have 2 chlorine atoms but on the right hand side I just have 1. That means I also need to balance on the right hand side by adding a 2, the coefficient, at the front. And then now obviously I have two sodium atoms here. That means I need to also balance the sodium on the left here. Now after you're done balancing everything, remember you need to add back the physical states. Now here in this particular reason, uh, in this particular video, you'll know the reason why we're so asking you to keep writing the physical states. So sodium, we know it's a metal, so it's a solid, obviously. Most metals are solids, except mercury, of course. HCl, we know it's a solution, so it's aqueous. Sodium chloride here, this is aqueous as well. Now you're like, sir, isn't sodium chloride a salt? But look at, you're just, you're adding sodium into, or you're adding hydrochloric acid into sodium metal. So obviously the salt that's formed is aq, and you can refer to chapter 11. You also learn it back there, that's aq. And hydrogen gas, this is obviously gas. All right, now let's talk about what are what exactly is an ionic equation. So first off, just by the name or by the word, obviously it has to deal with ions. So ionic equation actually, first off, you'll see that there will be, it's mainly to talk about ionic compounds you'll see ions present there. So you see some charges on top. And another thing to tell you is that it's mainly, or it's only to deal with actually, only to deal with AQ, those that have aqueous solutions. The solid, the liquid, the gas, we're not gonna care about it. They're just gonna remain the same. It's only affecting the AQ. So here is sodium. Here you can see that it's not AQ, it's a solid, so it's gonna remain the same. But here, something's going to happen to HCl because it's AQ. And here, NaCl is AQ. Something's going to happen to it. But hydrogen gas, no, it's going to remain the same. All right, so ionic equations, it's to deal with this. And remember I was saying that chemical equation is showing you the whole story. But ionic equation actually is telling you specifically what's happening in that story. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, here, what you're going to do with an ionic equation is First off, if you see anything that's solid, liquid, or gas, perhaps I'll use this color. If you see any of solid, liquid, or gas, you're just going to leave it as it is. So grab your sodium. The coefficient is going to remain the same. Nothing's going to happen to it. Okay. Now, this is going to remain the same, as I told you. But for HCl, what you're going to do is you're going to separate into charges. So you're going to show me what ions are produced like HCl here, right? How can you show me the ions? Obviously we know that it's H plus ion 
and Cl minus ion. Here, how for NaCl? Obviously, we know that's Na plus ion and Cl minus ion. So that's what I'm asking you to do. But one thing to pay attention to is you need to add back the coefficient. What do I mean by that? Now let's look here. I have HCl, right? So how many hydrogen ions would I have here in this case? Remember, this two would be, there's an imaginary bracket there, so it's going to times it by there. So two hydrogen ions here. Then add back the physical state, so AQ. How about, how many chlorine, chloride ions, sorry, how many chloride ions would there be? Remember, there's an imaginary bracket here, so I'm still going to have two chloride ions. So let's write that down. I'm still going to have two chloride ions. And there you go. Do the same thing on the other side. How many sodium ions would I have in this case? So, yep, still I will have two sodium ions. And add back the physical state, AQ. And what about how many chloride ions would I have? Remember, don't forget there's an imaginary bracket here. I'm still going to have two chloride ions. And then finally, finally I have my hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen gas, as I said, it's if it's solid, liquid, or gas, just keep it the same. If there's a coefficient, you keep it the same. All right. So let me add back the colors. So this is what happened now. So you can see I sort of split the HCl and the NaCl into ions, into charges. Okay, after you're done splitting it, so let me move this a bit down. After you're done splitting the charges, what you're supposed to do is, now you're going to see if you can cancel out, if you can cross out anything on the left and right hand side. So what do I mean by that? Look, on the left hand side here, do you see that you have two chloride ions here? And on the right hand side, do you see that you have the two chloride ions here? So actually what you can do is, if we were talking about math actually, what you're basically doing is, this is positive on one side, right? When you move it to the other side, what is it going to become? Is it going to become minus two chloride ion, right? So when you, when you see a plus two chloride ion and minus two chloride ion, so it's just like math, you, you can cross, cancel them out, okay? But in, this is the actual thing that's happening, but we tend to skip that step. We can just directly cancel these two out if they are on the left and right hand side. So I suggest you, you don't have to show that step, but actually this is what's going on. You're just moving one chloride ion to, to the other side. Two chloride ions, sorry, it should be two. So here I'm going to cross these out because they're sort of, not they're sort of, they are the same. And then you rewrite your final ionic equation. So here, this is your ionic equation. So I have gotten rid of the chloride ion and this is my final story. What do I mean by final story? This is the specific story. So actually, look at it. The actual reaction that's going on here is the sodium metal reacting with the hydrogen ion to form sodium ions and hydrogen gas. So what exactly was the purpose of the chloride ion? Actually, nothing. It's just, this is what we call, in your book, you'll see that word. This is what we call the spectator ion. So it's just enjoying the show. It's just a spectator in the whole reaction. But the main story, the specifically the main characters, or you can say the actors or actresses, were the sodium metal, the hydrogen ions, the sodium ions, and the hydrogen gas. So that's the logic behind ionic equations. Ionic equations specifically tell us what were the elements or what were the ions that were particular, particularly being involved in the reaction. So that's basically it. So again, reminder, what are ionic equations? They are to deal with ions. Okay, you'll see some charges. And we're just going to focus on the aqueous solutions. The solid, the liquids, and the gases, they're just going to remain the same. Nothing else. Okay, now that we know, let's try and do this one here. So what about magnesium being added to copper 2 sulfate solution? So always we're going to start off with writing the chemical equation. So what is the chemical equation here? So we have magnesium 
adding into copper 2 sulfate, which is CuSO4. Remember, this is Cu2 plus for copper 2, and SO4 2 minus is the charge for sulfate ion. And then just do the cross method, and you'll get this. So I'm not going to spend time on that. You can watch the videos on how you can do it. And then this will form MgSO4 plus Cu. Okay. Here, our main point is the this is a solid. Magnesium, we know it's a metal. It's a solid. Carpet 2 sulfate, you can see it's a solution. So AQ. Magnesium sulfate, obviously, this will be a solution as well. And copper is the solid here. Do I need to balance it? No, you can see all the atoms here. They are perfectly balanced. Okay, then, now that we know that what are ionic equations, these two will be my focus here. So grab your seat belts and let's finish this. Ionic equation. All right, first up, MG is going to remain the same. Nothing's going to happen to it. But here, this is where I need to show the charges. There's no coefficient in the front, so we don't need to show the coefficient. So just show that it's Cu2 plus. And then add back the physical state plus SO4 2 minus and add back the physical state. And this forms, what does it form? Mg2 plus. Add back the physical state, SO4 2 minus. And finally, get back your copper metal. And then now, do the same thing. Look for any of the spectator ions, those that are the same on the left and right hand side, the same like terms. So obviously here, we have sulfate ion. I can cross this out with the other sulfate ion and then just rewrite the ionic equation again. Plus Cu2 plus Aq. And this would form Mg2 plus, plus Cu solid. There you go. This is how you find the ionic equation. So one reminder here, actually, to give you a hint whether your answer is correct or not. So it suggests you at the end, also look whether the charges make sense. What do we mean by that? Look here. The overall charge on the left-hand side, you see there's a 2 plus charge here. The charge on the right-hand side is also going to be the same. Like here, this is 2 plus. Let me go up here, the previous question we did. Okay, here, what does this mean? Now, a lot of people think that this is just 1 plus charge. No, 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 no. Remember, what's the meaning of 2 H plus here? It means that you have 2 hydrogen ions. 2 hydrogen ions. That means the overall charge on here, let's say it's plus 2. The overall charge here is plus 2 because you have 2 hydrogen ions. And that means, how about on the right-hand side here? Don't Again, this is not just 1 sodium ion here. There are two of them, so Na plus and Na plus, that means there are two, the charge is also positive two. So on the left and right hand side, the charges are going to match. They're going to be the same. This is another way to make sure whether your calculation is correct or not, or whether you cancel out the right ones or not. Okay, so let's try this last one here, placing zinc into steam. So zinc we know is Zn plus steam. What is steam? Obviously, it's just H2O, water. H2O. And what will it form? Now, again, this is another reaction you learned in this chapter. It is going to form, for this one, you're going to form zinc oxide, not zinc hydroxide. Zinc hydro those that form hydroxide are obviously the ones that are more reactive in the Mel reactivity series. And you will form, what will you form? Obviously, hydrogen gas. Okay, so is this equation balanced? Yes, you'll notice that everything is balanced. And then let's add back the physical state. Zinc, we know it's a metal, so solid. And here, be careful, this is not um, liquid water. This is steam, so gas. Now zinc oxide here, this is also a solid. So this is the chemical equation, right? So here I skipped, I forgot to write this, but this is the chemical equation. So what about the ionic equation then? Ionic equation. Um, you're like, sir, 
I don't see how's is that possible? Well, no, it's not possible, right? You don't see any ions. You see, it's a solid. It's a gas. It's a solid. It's a gas. So actually, you can't form an ionic equation because there are no ions in the equation. So actually, for this question, there are n there is no way for you to even form an ionic equation. So that's what I'm saying. You gotta be careful every time. You gotta know what are their physical states. So get into the habit of writing the physical states, and later on, it'll become much, much more easy for you. So that's that's basically it for what's an ionic equation. So in the next video, we'll do some questions and wrap up this section. Okay, so that's the end for this. See you. Bye.